So the question on everybody's mind is this, Erin, how was your Mother's Day? Oh, probably nobody is asking that question. <laughs> They're all asking. They're all wondering right well, now. Well, now they are. Now they are. My Mother's Day was wonderful. Oh, it was? Did you want me to give details? Or maybe or? a little bit of details. I mean, just a little. So I woke up and too I Too much detail. Oh, no, okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, you go. And Isla, our middle child. Isla had waited until I went to bed and she cleaned the house for me, which was probably, no offense to you, the thing that meant the most because. Okay, no, I see. I was just able to rest in a fairly tidy home. Uh, Jeff ran all over town looking for bagels for me because. No big deal. Just... It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging that. It wasn't a big deal. <laughs> and he brought me these beautiful uh, long stem red roses. And then I just vegged all day long, which is my idea of a good Mother's Day. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah, it was yeah, perfect. That's cool. My effort was like subpar, but it otherwise then. Yeah, and it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's COVID Mother's Day. It's okay for it to be subpar. Oh, Just Lord. kidding. Just right. kidding. We hope you guys all had a wonderful Mother's Day we too. We do, yes. And, uh, yeah, okay. Well, hey, welcome to Rhythm Church. I'm Jeff. I'm the lead pastor here of the church. And um, and I'm Aaron, this, his wife. This is my wife. He doesn't want to introduce me this no, week. This is, no, this is the mother of my children, thus Mother's Day. <laughs> thus all the effort I put out that was not good enough. But um, that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, if, hey, if you're newer to our space, if you're newer to this church, maybe you've been logging on now for the past few weeks logging on, watching, whatever it is that you're, yeah. you're doing. Um, I, we just gotta let you know that we are, we are a loving church, we're a rad church, we're an excited church. We're a place that we're really into community. I mean, we want people to belong. This is a place where you can call home. It's yes. a place where you're gonna feel known, loved, and welcome. So even though you're joining us online, hopefully when we all get to gather again, uh, in spaces and places, you'll, you'll join us for one of our uh, services that way. Can so, I also say yes, we are can. a church that believes that the Bible is yes. God's word and it is for us and that it's the truth and that we should live it out. We no. don't want to forget about 100%. that. 100%. We're also a church that believes in the presence of God. Yes. And it's our prayer that his presence invades your spaces and places where you're watching this from. That's and that right. you feel his presence. Again, because like, it, we're, I'm all for great teaching, I'm all for good music, all that stuff, but without God's presence, it doesn't matter. That's right. It's his presence that impacts us and changes us. Um, hey, if you guys have not been to our website, MyRhythmChurch.com, on there there's everything. If you have kids, we've got a, a kids uh, ministry message as well as some activities. We've got a place for you to give online and support uh, the mission and vision of Rhythm Church. And by the way, thank you so much for all of your generosity. Uh, on Friday, we dropped off 134 bags of groceries to Mission Elementary School here. In, uh, in Oceanside, um, as well as all the other work that you're doing, the families that you're supporting. It's been yeah. awesome, thank you so much. Um, and But yes, yeah, so there's a place to give. There's a place for a digital communication card if you fill that out. If you guys have any needs, please let us know. Yeah. We, like, we would love to be praying for you. If we can meet those needs in any way we can, we will. Um, and then, or if you just wanna just say hi, what's up, or sign up for a team. We have uh, all sorts of digital team stuff happening right now. And then again, when we get back into meeting uh, in person, we're gonna need all sorts of help. So That's become right. a part of the community even before you're really a part of the community. And other than that, is there anything else that I think I'm forgetting or? We're just stoked you're with us yeah. today. And, and the message is going to be powerful. Yeah. And when it's over, if you want to go to our website and um, participate in worship, that's an option. We're just glad you're with us. Yep, 100%. It's going to be short. It'll be a short message. So that's exactly what's going to happen. I'm about to preach for 20-ish minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we'll pray. And then you guys can head to the website, click on that worship, get some worship, and... All that funny stuff. And then have stuff. a great day. And then have a great day. Have a good Sunday, people. Enjoy your Sunday afternoon. All right. Okay. Love you. Crush it. Thanks, babe. Ooh. Uh, hey, we're, we're in our nearness series. We're going to be in Mark chapter number six. Mark chapter number six, verses one through six. And I'll give you guys just a moment to get there. Again, if you're newer to your Bible, the easiest way to find it is turn to the very front of your Bible if you got a paper one and find that table of contents 
find the New Testament section to me, you'll see Matthew and then you see Mark. Go to Mark, page number, then find the big number six, and we're just going to start reading from there. The Nearness series. I've enjoyed this. Like, I think right now in this time as we're social distancing, most people are. A lot, a lot of people aren't so much anymore. I know you guys are kind of getting over it. Totally understand. Uh, but it's just been, for me personally, so good to remind myself daily that we have uh, the God that draws near. We have a God that's, that's with us, that doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. Um, it says uh, in, in Scripture that when we pray, like, I think it's, it's either Deuteronomy or Leviticus, but it says how incredible that we are the people that when we pray, we have our God that draws near to us, that comes near. And... Um, it says in James, when you come near to God, he comes near to you. So again, God is not social distancing himself from you. Jesus is with you. Here we go. Mark chapter 6, and it reads, Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he came to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were amazed. Now his hometown was Nazareth. He had since moved from his hometown to a place called Capernaum, which is right on the Sea of Galilee. And that's where he started his ministry and really like leaned into that. So he goes back to Nazareth. Now listen to this. It says, when Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What, what's this wisdom that's been given to him? And, and what are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Like they're like blown away, they're amazed, they're tripped out, this is like unreal. And as a matter of fact, this story, you can get different portions of it in Matthew as well as Luke, the synoptic gospels, the three gospels that have so many of the same stories. And it gives you a really well-rounded perspective of even what he teaches when he's in the synagogue. So they start asking, where does he get these things? How does he do these miracles? And then they go, verse three, um, yo, wait, isn't this, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Um, aren't his sisters here with us? And it says, and they took offense at him. Now Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own town among his relatives and in his own home. Watch this. He could not, he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Just, this is a few healings, just a few. And it says he was amazed. He was amazed at their lack of faith. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Today in our Nearness series, I just, I want to speak, talk, teach on this idea of amazing faith. Amazing faith. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, again, we ask that your Holy Spirit would invade every space and place that we're watching from. Uh, Lord, whether we're by ourselves or with our family, in our homes, God, just be here with us. Teach us, encourage us, convict us. But Lord, ultimately, we just want to be closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> Again, I know all you guys, just like us, we're trying to do our best to stay home. And uh, right now, entertainment is getting slim. Uh, I think we've watched everything that we really want to watch on Netflix for the most part, even though they, they, they keep coming out with some new stuff and it's good. I think um, we, we signed back up for Hulu so that we could dive in. We're watching shows like 90 Day Fiance. I'm just going to be real. No judgment. Don't judge me. I know it's, you watch things that I wouldn't agree with either. But anyway, so we're watching 90 Day Fiance, and that, that show's a trip. I won't get into some detail, but it's weird. It's a weird show. Um, no offense if you've ever done a 90 Day Fiance thing. More power to you. Hope you found love. Um, but we're watching, we're watching uh, oh, on Netflix, we're watching, oh, no, not, no, no, uh, Outer Banks. We're watching the Outer Banks, which is pretty cool. My daughters uh, like it. It has a lot of, like, you know, ripped teenage, a ripped adult men playing teenage boys. I don't understand that one. I, no, you, no, don't snap for that girl. Oh, 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 for what I just said. I thought you were like, yes, <laughs> guys that are playing teenage boys. I thought that my daughter's here in, no, India. But yes, snaps for, exactly. Act your age, guys. Literally, act your age. If you're 25, play 25-year-old. You're not 15. Okay, so... 
we're watching that stuff. And for the most part, it's just all entertainment. But there's been one show that I have to say I have like globbed onto that I absolutely love. And I try to take some time like without distraction and I just hone in on it. Um, and that's uh, The Last Dance. The Last Dance. That has been... Uh, it's like a reminder of my childhood. It takes me back like, man, I remember being in sixth and seventh grade and I, maybe seventh grade, one of the greats, like I was like in middle school and Sports Illustrated came out with like that Michael Jordan VHS that like had all like, it was like recapped his career so far. Just, man, he was, he was just so fun to watch play basketball. And then now to get into this documentary thing into just the way that it jumps, it's even done really well, it jumps from you know, like the early 90s to the late 90s to the, like the late 80s to the late 90s. The way it works is beautiful. Anyways, if you haven't watched it, watch it. It takes you through Michael Jordan, man. That guy, like, it just greatness, greatness, poetry, emotion, amazing, right? So um, I've been into that. I've been enjoying that and, you know, kind of learning a lot because the backs, you know, like you didn't really realize all the stuff that was happening at the time. It takes you kind of more in depth into who that man was. Um, and I, uh, because of it, the other day I, I noticed that there was a, on YouTube, there was an interview that was done with his kids where uh, they interviewed like all, like his two sons and one of his daughters or one of his daughters. I don't know how many daughters he has, one daughter, whatever. So uh, in that interview, they're talking to the guys and his daughter's the youngest. And the interviewer says, hey, when did you know that your dad, like that Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan? And she goes, you know, honestly, um, I really didn't know. I think I had to Google him. She goes, I had to Google him. I was 10, 11 years old and I had to Google my dad to figure out who, like, who he was, like what the big deal about my dad was. Isn't that crazy? Here she is, like, like the daughter of one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And she doesn't necessarily know how incredible he is because she lives with him. He's dad. There's, there's the familiarity. There's the commonality that, that, like, of who this guy is. And so she has to Google him at the age of 10 or 11 years old to find out who Michael Jordan is. I tell my kids all the time, Google me. Google me and figure out who your dad is, all right? Dad's just not just some dad hanging out. Google me, kids. And so they do, and they find pictures from like 10 years ago, and they go, Dad, you look way older now. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good dad and a subpar husband, but whatever. So <laughs> I'm just kidding, babe. Um, but what we see like right here in, in Scripture is you have like the greatest. We have Jesus. We have the Son of God, the Messiah, comes to his hometown, and they do not recognize his greatness. They do not fully understand who he is. I mean, at first they're amazed. They're amazed at his teaching. He gets up, and it, it says in one of the, I think it's in Luke, that he opens up the scroll of Isaiah, and he reads from it, and he says, in your hearing, this is fulfilled. Basically saying that, look, I am the Messiah and I am here now. And they are blown away. They're amazed. It says they are amazed. But, but then they start to do something. They try to start to figure it out. They, they start asking, well, where, where, does he, where does he get this wisdom? And, uh, and, and how, does he, how is he doing all these remarkable miracles? Like, who, like they're trying to, to diagnose and figure out what, like, what's really behind this. And, and, then, and then they say, wait, isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this the carpenter? They're, they're beginning to really familiarize themselves with him. They're, really, they're, they're taking him down from where he is and just making him common. But they're doing it in a very insulting way. See, when, you say, when they say, isn't this the carpenter? They're not just calling out a profession. What they're saying is like, look, man, you are a carpenter. There's no way you can be a rabbi. There's no way that you can be a teacher. There's no way that you can have the wisdom you have because in that day and age, at the age of 13, you either continued your studies and went on and like were discipled by a rabbi and you became like, you know, then the man of God and you would, you know, teach other people about God's word and all that stuff. But uh, Jesus became a carpenter. So he was, the, he was the carpenter in town, which was either you're working with wood and stone. It meant a lot of stuff at that, at that time. And so they're saying, look, there is no way that you should have all this knowledge. There's no way that you can be a rabbi. So, and in, in, in basically they're saying, you're fake, you're phony, you ain't real. That's what, that's what they're telling Jesus when they say, 
Anyway, isn't this the carpenter? And then they go, and then they go, oh, wait, it's, wait this, is, this is Mary's son. Isn't this the, the son of Mary? The son of Mary. Now, again, we, we think back and we have like these, uh, uh, we, we think very highly of Mary in, in our society. We think, man, she is Mary, the mother of God. Like, that's Mary. Of course, she's, he is the son of Mary. But first century, for a first century Jew, you would be always, you'd always be called by the son of your father, even if your father was dead. So they're saying, like, isn't this the son of Mary? They're, they're insulting him by saying, oh, I'm not gonna, we're not going to say that you were the son of Joseph. It also, also leans to the idea, too, that there were rumors, of course, when Jesus was born that he wasn't Joseph's son. That, you know, like, so they're kind of bringing up, like, we know your past, or, we, you know, we think we know your past, we think we, we understand this stuff. So in this moment, they're discrediting his divinity. They may not fully understand it, but they're trying to say, uh, you ain't God, you are just some common dude like everybody else, and they take offense at him. They, t- they get offended at what God, what Jesus is speaking to them, what Jesus is speaking to them. Now, I, I, I look at that and I go, wow, that's, just, that's absolutely crazy. Like, how could, how could they do this? And, and because they took offense and because they, they brought him down to like this common spot, it says that he was amazed at their lack of faith. He, and he could do no miracles, only heal a few sick people. He could do no miracles, only heal a, a few sick people. He was amazed at their lack of faith. There's only two times in scripture, two times people, one and two times where it says that Jesus was amazed. The first time is in Matthew chapter 8, verses uh, 5 through 10, and we, we won't go there. I'll just tell you the, the quick story. Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 10, Jesus rolls into town, and it says a centurion, which was a Roman soldier, well, a Roman soldier of authority, runs up to Jesus and says, hey, my servant is sick. I need you to heal him. And Jesus goes, all right, cool. Let's go. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go heal your servant. The Roman centurion says, look, uh-uh, I don't deserve to have you come to my house. So all you have to do is say the word. He says, say the word and my servant will be healed. He goes, I I get it. I'm a man under authority and I'm a man of authority. And I know that my word carries weight. So I can see, Jesus, that you are a man of authority and your word, when it's sent, will carry out what it's supposed to do. And Jesus stops everybody. He says, whoa, hey, you gotta check this out. I have not seen such great faith in all of Israel, than than this man right here. It says he was amazed at this man's faith. And this man's faith was tied to believing the word of God. Now these people, Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. And you can see right here in verse four, he says a prophet is not without honor except in his own town and amongst his own relatives, and in his own home. What he's saying there is that the the prophet was not honored. The prophet was not honored. Now, the prophet was somebody who spoke the word of God. It was God's messenger. He spoke what God was saying, and he'd speak it to the people. So, and Jesus, of course, prophet, king, priest, he's like, he's, he's, he's it. And they're saying, you're not honoring the word of God. Now, to honor means to give weight to, it means to prioritize, um, it means to put up. I don't like, I'm trying to think of other words. It just like, it means like to honor something really means to, to put emphasis on it, to put weight on it, like this matters. And so the reason why these people have such lack of faith is because they dishonor the word of God, because they didn't put it as priority, because they didn't take it as first, they didn't take it as the most. They didn't give weight to it. And because of that, no miracles were done in their, in their town. Now, I, I know some of you guys out there are like, man, hey, cool story, bro. But like, what does that have to do with us? Like, what is, like, what lesson are we supposed to learn from that? Let me, let, let me, let me just say this. I think that it's incredibly close to how sometimes we live our Christianity. At first, we're amazed. 
Oh my gosh, we're so amazing. Like, I, I, you know, they, they talk about in scripture returning to the joy of your salvation. Like when, you're, when you first discover Jesus and you first you like lean into him, you're like, oh my, oh my, oh my God, like this, he's amazing. He's so full of grace and so full of love. And you, you, you're like, you're amazed that he's done miracles and you're amazed at what he's doing in your life of like how you, so, you, you felt so weighted down by guilt and shame, but now you don't, this is awesome. And, and, and you're amazed, but after a while, we start to like, we start to make him common in our lives. We start to, maybe we're, we try to figure him out a little bit like they were trying to figure him out. And we get to a place to where like, oh yeah, I know that stuff. Oh, yeah, I, I get that. Like, oh, I've read that. that like, the word is now common to me. I, oh, I've, I've, I've read that portion of scripture before. Oh, 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 pastor's teaching on this today, huh? Oh, I've heard that taught on before, too. I get that. Oh, oh, Mark, Mark chapter 6. I've read that many times. Look at how many, it's like all underlined in my Bible with all sorts of stuff in the side. Ah, I'm mean, going to can tune out for this one. We, we, we all of a sudden make this, this our Christianity and our expressions of it common again. Yeah. Prayer becomes common to us. Ah, I can take it or leave it. The word can become common to us. And all of a sudden, before we, we even realize it, we've made Jesus common wow. in our lives. And, and when you make him common, what you start to do is you, you slowly begin to, uh, what's the word? We slowly almost stop believing his, in his divinity and his power. Right. Um, we don't take it as seriously. And we can see this in the way that we live our lives. In, in, in the way that we, um, instead of praying first, we do everything else and prayer becomes our last resort. Like, try everything else and everything else fails, then pray. No, 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 pray first. Go to the source first. Go to the one who has power first. Go, go to Jesus. But, again, as Christians, we live in this really weird tension. We live in this tension of, okay, uh, there needs to be a familiarity. He, he is our father. Like, he is our friend. Like, there is this relationship that we have with, with Jesus. There, there's a, a back and forth. There's communication. There's connection. So we live in the tension of that, but not allowing him to be too common, to where we're too familiar. You know, like uh, you've heard the saying, familiarity breeds contempt. Where all of a sudden, like at, at once, like it's like, wow, Jesus. And after a while, it's like, yeah, Jesus. You know, at, at once, like, wow, like, you know, when you're dating that someone, you're like, oh my gosh, they're the best person in the world. Oh, I want to be with them all the time and just love them and hug them and kiss them. I can't, st- <laughs> I don't know where that accent came from. <laughs> like, I just want to be with them, right? And then after a while, you're like, no, oh, I don't really like the way they're dressed today. I'm not really a big fan of that haircut anymore. Like, you, you start to become a little bit too familiar with them. And then the woman that you once, like, revered and loved and respected and honored, all of a sudden, she's like a second-class citizen in her own home. Or vice versa, the dude that you're like, he can do no wrong, six pack abs, come on bro. Like, all of a sudden he's like, that guy doesn't do anything around this house, I can't stand him. Like, it, it's so easy when stuff becomes familiar for us to start to knock it down. It's, hum- it's almost like human nature for us to wanna to bring others down to a level that we consider ourselves at or below us. Like we see what they do with Jesus. Oh, isn't, oh this is the carpenter. He's not, oh, he's not a real rabbi. Mm-mm. Oh, he's, he's Mary's son. We know all about like the past and the story and all of that. Like we're not even gonna say he's Joseph's son because we don't really know. And like, we're just gonna keep bringing him down and bringing him down. And what if we as a people weren't those that tried to make everybody else common, but tried to make everybody else uncommon, tried to really celebrate the differences and, and, and the, the uniqueness of every single human being on this planet. There, I don't think there's such thing as a common human, by the way, because we are all uncommon. The fact that we are here living and breathing makes us uncommon. We We've beat the odds, people. We've beat the odds. Yes. Now, how much more so with Jesus? How much more so with Jesus? <sighs> Has the word become common to you? Has the word become common to you? Has it become something you just know? Are, are you honoring the prophet? Are you honoring the prophet? <laughs> 
Are you giving weight and priority to his word? And, and, and this is what I mean by that. Are you allowing his words to shape your life? Or do you allow your life and your experiences to shape his word? Because too often, I see this as believers, we start to discredit and discount the stuff that we see in scripture because we haven't necessarily seen it in our lives. Oh, miracles, that's for the past. Oh, miracles, that's for like way back then. Oh, oh, oh uh, healings, I don't really know if they happen anymore. Maybe like, like we, we start to discredit these things. We start to take them down a notch as opposed to like, no, 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 no. If it says in scripture that we can do it, then I believe as a Christian that we can do it. If it says in scripture, if Jesus says you will do greater things than, than I've done, then I gotta go, then why aren't I doing greater things? Not, oh, well, he really didn't mean if I break it down and I switch it around. I think it's, I think it's time that we start to give honor to his word. It, look, here's, here's the deal. He could not do many miracles there except heal a few sick people. It was not that they removed God's power from them, but it was not that they removed God's power from him, but they removed God's power from their own lives when they began to dishonor the word of God. That was really good. I would write, like at home, write, if you're taking notes, write that one down. It, he couldn't do any miracles, not because he, he had no more power. They didn't take his power away from him. They just took his power out of their lives. And I wonder how many of us are living our lives without the power of God are trying to make it through this life without God's power evident in our lives. I know for me at times, I feel that. For me at times, like, I have to go back and be like, wait, no, 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 no. God's power is real, miracles are real, and they are for me, and they are for this time, and they are in my life. Let's get back to his word. Let's get back to the importance of, of, of hearing the word of God preached. Where does, where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and, and hearing by the word of Christ, as it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Where, like faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So they heard his word, but they didn't receive that word. Let's start, let's, let's, let's begin to, to hunger and thirst again for God's word, for the preached word and for the written word. Like, and, and like right now, my, my fear that in this time is we're becoming a little bit apathetic because we're so inundated with like screen stuff all the time. And, and I, I get it. It's called, there's like, there's new terms. It's called, I think it's screen fatigue. Maybe that's not a new term, but whatever. Like screen fatigue. I'm over Netflix. I'm over YouTube. I'm over these things. And so, man, on Sunday morning, am I really going to tune in and what? Uh, I don't know. I got better. So Monday afternoon, am I really going to go watch the sermon, whatever it is? So, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Do it. You, you, we need it more than we realize. We need this more than we realize. Like, it, for a lot of us, every day is like Groundhog, like, Groundhog Day. Like, I get it. There's some days I'm like, wait, is it Wednesday or is it Friday? I'm not quite sure. It's, it's just, it's, it's the time in which we're living in. Um, we're, I, I think, too, it's important for us to really watch what we're hearing. I mean, a lot of us are listening more to politicians than we are to Jesus. We're watching more news than, um, than, we're, than we're watching Jesus in his word. We're, uh, I mean, man, I don't wanna like offend anybody or whatnot, but it, it's interesting when you, when you begin to talk to somebody, whether it's on the phone or you see them six feet apart or whatever, you can totally tell like what stations or what, or what YouTube channels they're watching or all that stuff because it, they just begin to spew what it is they've received. Man, that's why it's so important that we're receiving from Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. If you begin to speak faith and hope in this time, you're going to stand out. Yeah. You're going to stand out. Like, is there, is this whole thing a conspiracy? I don't know. Maybe. We'll find out. But it, it's not necessarily my job to uncover conspiracy. It's, right. it's my job to be loved by God and to love others that way. Yes. Right? It's, it's. Yes. It, is, this, is, the, is this a real virus? Is it a, I don't know, but I know that the Holy Spirit's real, and I know when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, it's gonna radically change you. That's what I know, and that's what I can begin to, like, I'm just gonna preach what I know in this season. And it's funny, like, there was a video I just watched the other day on YouTube, of course, but it was like, they, they're going back and forth, like, right now, everybody's an expert. 
Right now, everybody knows. You know, like, you know, do you, if you really want to know what's going on with this virus, call your sister's boyfriend. He knows. You know, like, and because everyone thinks they're like, all of a sudden, like, the scientists don't know anything. I know that I, maybe they're making stuff up. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves this world. Jesus loves your neighbor. They need hope. And you can be the one to bring it to them. Do you need a miracle in your life? I think we all do. I think it's time for miracles again. I think it's time for some signs and some wonders, but I don't get there when all I feel myself is with doubt. When I take his, his word and I dishonor it. No, this is it, this is real. Man, we cannot value what a politician says more than we value what Jesus says. Let's get, let's get back to this. I, I want Jesus to be amazed in this time. I want Jesus to be so amazed by his church, but I want Jesus to be amazed by his church because of a Matthew chapter eight, not a Mark chapter six, where we take his word and we go, Jesus, you said it, it's done, we got it. We're, yep, you don't, you, don't even have to, you don't have to show up over here, we know that you, you said it, it's done. Like, let's get to that place. Because people, he loves you, he cares for you, he's got so much grace for you. And I know that even at times that, that, that can be offensive. It can be offensive to us because we see how much love and grace he has for people that we don't necessarily like or that have differing views and opinions. And we can, all of a sudden we can become like the Nazarites, again, or Nazarites, the, the people in Nazareth again, where we're like, oh, uh, we're offended because Jesus cares for those people too. No, let's just get back to that place of he loves you. Man, he's got a hope and a future for you. Even beyond 2020, people even beyond 2020. So let me, just, let me just end with this. I'm getting too excited, getting too worked up, I'm starting to break a sweat here on camera. Yeah, make up, make up. No, okay. It, it, like, where, where are you at and, and what do you need right now? Like, let, let's, let's, let's take a moment as a, as a church, as a community. Let's take a moment as a church and community. Let's pray for some miracles. Let's, like, let's make Jesus amazed at our faith. Let's make Jesus amazed because we believe him at his word, that we honor the prophet. We give weight to the word of God. Yeah. I don't know what you need for a miracle, but I want to partner with you right now. If you're, if you're watching and, and you can, maybe write what you need in, in the comment section. If you're watching at our 9 a.m., then you have the chat sec check section on the, uh, on the, uh, in the YouTube portion. If you're watching later, go to the comment section. If you're watching with us on Facebook, then just write down there. Even if it's in a watch party, just type in the comments. What kind of miracle do you need? How can we partner with you in prayer for this? How can we believe God's word with you in this? How can we? Write it, type it, let us know, and fill out a digital communication card. I want to know because I, I, I'm, I believe him in his word. I'm going to allow his word to shape my experience. I'm going to give honor to the Son of God and what he speaks. What miracle do you need? Let's amaze him. Let's amaze him, church. Let's have amazing faith. Not Nazareth faith. The lack of faith. Unbelief. But let's, let's continue to be amazed by him. He's not common. He's near, but he ain't common. So whatever you need miracle for right now, I just want you, wherever you're at, have that in your mind, because we're going to pray right now. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your great love, and we thank you for your great grace that is for all of us. And we thank you for your incredible forgiveness. If you're out there right now and, and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you don't know him, you've not received his forgiveness, you've not uh, uh, taken um, the step to say, I'll, I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life, and you want to, if you're out there right now and you're like, look, the way I'm living my life isn't working. The guilt and the shame that I feel doesn't work. I want to I take the free gift of forgiveness and free gift of grace. If you're out there, um, I just want you to repeat this real quickly after me. It's just a short prayer. The prayer doesn't make you uh, have a fresh new start, but it's just, just a way for you to express what's taking place in your heart. It's me helping you do that. And if you did do that, let us know in the comments or fill out a digital communication card, just let us know. But just say this, dear Jesus, right now, 
I decide to give you my life, to receive forgiveness for every wrong thing I've ever done or every wrong thing I ever will do. Thank you for loving me and teach me to love others the same way. Amen. So good. That's the greatest miracle, by the way, people. This, a, a saved soul is the greatest miracle ever. Right now, if you just gave your life to Jesus, you just experienced a miracle. You are a walking miracle. Now, for, for everyone else, we've got that miracle. Jesus, we believe you. It's your word. And we, act, we ask that you would act in each and every one of our situations where we need a, a healing or we need a financial miracle or we need um, a, a miracle when it comes to our, our job situation or um, we just need, uh, maybe it's, we need a miracle for another family member or healing for another family, Wh whatever it is, healing, finances, anything, God, we ask right now that you would intervene in Jesus' mighty name because we believe you at your word, amen, amen. Hey. Rhythm Church, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Thanks to everyone who's tuning in from all over San Diego and all over the nation. We love you, we're praying for you, and we can't wait to see you again.